Collision had three good to great tournament matches. We had Brody beating Claudio with a lariat using the cast, which I'm trying to figure out if he's actually still got a broken hand after three solid months or if this is now, you know, Bob Orton Jr. Well, but he, uh, he hit him with that cast allegedly and got the pin. So he now has six points. He's in the lead in that block. And apparently uh, Continental Classic rules uh, override House of Black rules because I thought there were no rope breaks in the House of Black because... Well, know, no, was, this is different rules, dude. Style. Don't get me started on these different rules, these these wacky rules. That John Moxie promo from YouTube aired by the grace of God is incredible. Mm-hmm. And apparently there's another incredible one after uh, Eddie Kingston lost to Danielson, which hopefully they'll air that one on Wednesday. Then we had Kira Hogan and Abaddon. <laughs> this this thing. It's just like this women's division is just hilarious. So Abaddon, we never, ever see her. And then she showed up on Halloween and just won a number one contenders match, got a title match, lost. Well, now she randomly returns, faces Kira Hogan, beats her in four minutes, and now she's getting another championship match. She returns like twice a year to get championship matches, which she then loses. You, you look at her. You going to tell her no? Yes, I will. Because I'm not scared of someone with face paint on. Mm-hmm. I'm a grown man. Then we had uh, some Ojo and Roddy. There's Roderick Strong. It's it's a lot of haha, but I, I do laugh. I do go haha. Mm-hmm. Daniel Garcia and Andrade in a tournament match. Garcia's lost yet again. He's beaten by Andrade. And uh, they got 11 minutes. Good match. Hammerlock DDT finish. And Andrade, three more points in the tournament. Daniel Garcia can't catch a win, as they say in sports. We had a Willie Mack promo, which I can only describe as, like, it was... Mactacular. It was. It was not good, but it was amazing and awesome at the same time. He wants Wardlow, so that's coming up here soon. Wardlow's got a big lunch to eat, he notes. Then we have Roddy and the Kingdom coming out, and it was the Kingdom versus the Iron Savages, and as good while it lasted, stuff pile driver finish. And, you know, yesterday I was I was listening back and... You know, Craig said that uh, these these kingdom and the Roderick Strong, they're terrible people because they, they, they preach neck health, but then their finish is a stuffed pile driver. And he said that was just terrible to do that. But see, I was thinking about it, and he's wrong. This is a neck health advertisement. Hmm. Yes. You need to work on your neck because you never know when you might eat a spike pile driver it is a public service message this finisher they are good people not bad people where do you stand on neck bridges brian not good for your neck mm. better ways to strengthen it lexi is with ethan page and uh he has challenged kenny omega to prove who the best canadian wrestler is and actually you know dave made a good point on the show these guys never say when. They just make these challenges. And then later they tell us what of the 85 shows is actually on. So this one is on Collision next Saturday, which is taped Tuesday. Okay? I bet you I know why they don't tell you, because they don't know. Which No, is, of course they know. know. He's got it all. Because by the end of the show, they get graphics up there. Frankly, but. this all leads back to the DVR thing. Plan your stuff better, guys. And then Kenny Omega's response on Twitter was, A singles match? <laughs> we had In this economy? Malachi and Buddy versus Daniels and Matt Seidel. Love this match. Daniels and Seidel were a great team. Malachi and Blo- uh, Buddy gave them a ton. Not bloody. Buddy. And uh, got seven minutes. Malachi hit the kick on Daniels and pinned him. Excellent match. Post-match. I just... <laughs> Cannot for the life of me figure out what's happening. Now that must have happened during an overrun that none of us saw. Apparently. Yeah, I think this was. Uh, I think they've had like six weeks of overruns, and I missed all of them. So FTR comes out, and Malachi says, "I, I should just break this down moment by moment." 
So the House of Black is in the ring. The lights go out. And when they come back on, FTR is coming out. So apparently FTR controls the lights now, not House of Black. So Malachi looks at him and he goes, looks to me like you guys are joining the House of Black. I said, how do you, how do you get that? What are you talking about? What do you mean they're joining the House of Black? Why? So uh, the fans chant House of Black. Malachi then says, the only people in this locker room that have ever been here for the both of you are the House of Black. I thought, I have seen FTR team with all sorts of different people. And not once ever have I seen them team with House of Black. Not ever. once ever have I seen ever. a storyline where the House of Black has FTR's back. Not once ever. Ever. Are we talking like in real life they're friends in the back? Because as a, as a fan of the show, I've never seen this ever. Ever. So Dax goes to pick up the mic, which Malachi dropped, and then they just kill him. They beat him up. They say, hey, look, no one's coming to help you, which is true. And uh, I, st- I don't know where uh, Adam Copeland was. I thought he was their friend, but he didn't care. And they left them for dead. So uh, this was an alternate universe storyline. It's like, you know, Tony has one computer where he does his actual stuff, and he's got another computer where he does his fantasy booking when he was at like eight or whatever. And, uh, and that storyline was on that other computer. But he forgot and typed it into this one. Something! I don't know what it was. Mm. Then we have Tony Storm. She's uh, offering Sky Blue the first title shot. And then we had Kip Sabian and Vikingo. This was a standby match. Standby match. And Vikingo beat him. Vikingo looked awesome. It was a fun eight-minute match. Keith Lee challenges Shane Taylor for final battle. Or other way around, Shane Ch- uh, Taylor challenges him. Keith accepts, so that's on. Then, God help me, we had Miro and CJ. Here's another one. Miro wants to get into Andrade's locker room. They've been building up this Miro-Andrade match. And then CJ says, no. She explains, you picked your god. Now I have to prove myself. By winning this tournament, I will start to be on this path, and it's going to help me, okay? So if you have to go in there, go in there. But if you have any love for me, just let me do this and find my own way. So apparently, uh, uh, Miro here is promised that he will not lay a hand on Andrade. So we're not getting that match imminently. Or he's a liar. A dirty liar. Oh, my God. When can, can when can Miro and Andrade have their loser leaves and goes back to WWE match, which ends in a draw, and they both go? I don't know, but you know what? The storyline is working its way slowly to being so bad it's good. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. <laughs> But, like, soon I'm going to be able to not wait to find out what horrible thing is going to happen next with this CJ and Miro storyline. And then the main event was uh, the best match of the tournament. Brian Danielson, Eddie Kingston tournament match. Danielson's got a, a gi- he's got an eye patch so big that it keeps falling into the other eye. And he's trying to wrestle. And then he tries to get it out of his eye, but then this one comes up and he's got, I'm like, oh, my God. Can't you get him like a titanium face mask, like Undertaker had or something? Keep this poor the guy. Thing around there, for and they're having sense. a Muay Thai match early in a grappling battle. Which and that makes sense. And he's throwing eye. these forearms right by his eye. I'm like, this guy's got to make four more matches, dude, to get to Okada. And I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't but anyway, <laughs> he uh, he won with the knee. 17 minutes. They teased the draw. Did not deliver. Deliver. Match deliver. was absolutely awesome. But this guy's going to kill himself wrestling with one eye. It's just... I, I wrestled, everybody. I, I wrestled. You Why? can't wrestle with an eye. I mean, you can, but, like, you're not supposed to. No. Especially hard matches like this. So, anyway... Why did they have to have the Continental Classic now? Why does he have to have... I don't know why they couldn't wait matches. until, like, February. Yeah. Or March. I don't know. Or April. May, yeah, February and March. What fantastic comedian. June's great going on. You know, I, mean, I don't know. July, hot summer. Well, anyway. Hey guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.